Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in to the Uncommon Mindset Podcast. Um, today, I'm joined by Ash Williams. Uh, I'll just give you a background on uh, who Ash is. Um, so Ash is a first degree black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu under Chris Reese. Uh, he's known to be one of the most well-known European athletes of his generation. He has competed in events such as Polares, Grapple Fest, Kasai Pro, EBI and more, winning countless medals and belts all over the world. Um, Ash is not only ranked within the top 10 no-gi grapplers uh, in his weight category, but he's also my jiu-jitsu coach and role model to me and everyone here at Chris Reese's Academy. Uh, this guy is no joke, and I'm super excited to get to talk to you today, Ash. Oh, awesome. Thanks for having me on the wrap. Yeah, no worries. Um, so just to start off with now, I just want to ask, what was your upbringing like? Like, uh, what age did you start Jiu-Jitsu, and like, why did you start? Um, that's an interesting question, so no one's really asked me that before uh, oh, okay. on a podcast. Um, so I, I would say good. Like, I, uh, I wouldn't say I had a bad upbringing at all. Like, yeah. parents were supportive um, in, in different ways. You know, my mum's actually... Uh, she was a teacher uh, mm-hmm. when I was a kid. She was um, a teacher of primary schools, so I think she was very much um, into like the education side of things. You know, like always doing all homework, etc. Yeah. Uh, and then my dad was the martial arts uh, aspiration of the kind of um, family. So my parents were divorced. So obviously, we we, we didn't uh, didn't spend time with both of them together. But yeah. my dad, when he had us, he would take us to uh, jiu jitsu, or even he would just pick us up. Um, through the week after school, whoever just takes jiu jitsu and then drops home to our mother. Yeah. Um, he initially got us into it. I think we were about six. Um, me and my twin brother, uh, Josh, we got into it. I think we were about six years old. Uh, but that was Japanese, like traditional style jiu jitsu, purely self defense orientated. Uh, where we trained until we were, I think, sixteen years old. Yeah. Um, you know, training two to three times a week probably as a child. Um, we both got our black belts when we were 14 um, in traditional jiu-jitsu. Um, and then I came across, uh, we both came across Brazilian jiu-jitsu from a recommendation actually from a coach at that time. Yeah. And um, we just kind of fell in love with it. Um, the biggest difference I, w- I would kind of say is what I think I feel from my kind of upbringing is... Um, I think it's the same for a lot of people who who are high achievers in life is that uh, when I've, I've been watching a lot of documentaries lately or reading books and I've always felt like it's not a coincidence when someone reaches the top of a field, you know, it, it, yeah. they don't just fall into place and it just kind of, that's how it works out for them. Yeah. You know, like I have to like, I always say that I have to like recite my math timetables, for example, I had to do my whole math timetables before I was allowed to go to like rugby practice yeah. or whatever I was doing at the time, I always had to try and like earn um, or, or push to achieve more than kind of my peers at the time. Yeah. So like I was at trying to get like high marks on all my homework. You know, if I had like ninety percent, uh, I always remember like it's it's not like um, I don't like it, there's pros and cons to the the approach. But like I found like my dad when I got my GCSEs and I got like a couple of A's and then I got a couple of B's. Yeah. And uh, he was like, oh, what happened in in those subjects you got B's? I was like, dad, man, like you know a lot of a lot of parents would be happy their kids, yeah. you know, got B's in subjects that they hate because they wouldn't even socially enjoy it. They were socially really, really tested. They had nothing yeah. to do with my passion. And I still got B's in them, you know. Their, their B's isn't brilliant. Like, could I got better? For sure. Um, but, you know, I was doing jiu-jitsu every night of the week or gymnastics, rugby, football. I was doing everything else. And I always remember, like, phoned him and he was like, oh, what, what happened there? And I was like, well, all right, I could have done better. But you could you could have at least said, well done, first of all. I mean, you could have yeah. at least like, congratulated <laughs> me on passing with disease and, and trying to, you know, to achieve something. Yeah. Um, I think that's kind of the approach a lot of high level, especially competitors have is, because uh, when people ask me about my achievements, they say, you know, like, how did you feel when you won this? How did you feel when you came off the mat there? Yeah. And I always say like the, the kind of like the enjoyment of, and the glory of winning in that moment is like undescribable, you know, it's such a good feeling. But for me personally, like that's all it is. It's like a momentary feeling of success. Yeah. Because I know that like success wasn't built in that day, you know, it wasn't built in that minute or that match that I had. Yeah. And when I come off the mat, I've got to now look for a different goal to achieve, uh, which will s- surpass the goal I just accomplished, you know? Yeah. So yeah. you almost never really enjoy, like truly enjoy in the moment you're having because you know you're building you know towards yes that that unattainable goal which i don't know what it is still you know i still don't know what the end goal is yeah um and that's why i think 
is the difficult thing um, about being an athlete. Like, I would say that personally for me is the hardest thing. Um, even like growth, I said like the the, the, the fact you know, that's why that's the top interesting because they said no one's asked me about my, my childhood or the way I grew up. But like in my opinion, that's what I would describe my childhood as is that like almost like my parents were proud of me, yeah. but almost everything wasn't quite good enough. You know, like, I had to try and achieve a bit more mm-hmm. than anything I got. Yeah. You know, which I think is um, an interesting approach. Um, you know, I think not not um, anti, and obviously like my bro- my brother also runs a gym. You know, and he's a he's a very good jujitsu black belt. My sister is doing very well um, yeah. in terms of her career. So you know, obviously like uh, there's there's great um, positives to that approach, I suppose. You know, yeah. um, and I said when I watched that, if you know, I think the easy one to watch is the Michael Jordan documentary, yeah. um, and you can tell just how much. The idea of being like um, not normal, but the idea of like not like not being a high achiever to him, yeah. like almost he doesn't even want to surround himself with anyone who hasn't got that drive in them. Yeah, you yeah. know, which I think is like it's you know, when you watch Michael Jordan documentary. I think when you watch him, you think he's such like he's so inspiring and he's incredible. Yeah. But if you don't also watch it and think like that's a little bit sad, you know, at the same time. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. I think it's um. I think you know you're not really seeing the full story, yeah. uh, and that's why I say like a lot of athletes now I watch, and the main thing they concern themselves with is trying to enjoy themselves in the moment as well, of course, um, yeah. as enjoying yourself and the build up or the win itself. You know you want to try to enjoy the whole journey, and that's something yeah. I've been trying to do for the last uh, year or so since I've been starting to look into um, different characters and different industries and uh, different successful people. No, that's brilliant. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll touch uh, more on like success and like your goals and stuff as well because I find that really fascinating. Um, so, just a question I had here was uh, like, when did you know that you know this is what you want to do for the rest of your life? Okay, so that, that again, that's uh, a very interesting. I guess this actually this is probably one of the most for common or frequent questions I get asked uh-huh. you now because I think like especially if you watch like a lot of movies or TV shows or, or whatever else about people who uh, compete or achieve yeah. stuff. Uh, you know, then maybe they've got like a picture on their wall, or they've got like yeah. a, a goal list written down on a whiteboard. You know, like you obviously like uh, like maybe like a school book, and they're like, oh, I will be this when I'm older. Yeah. Uh, and they can kind of, like open it from then their school book from like yeah. twenty years <laughs> later, and they're like, oh, I've achieved the type of thing. You know, like yeah. you see these things all the time. But for me, like it was it was nothing remotely like that. Do you no. know, there's no part of me um, sat there and thought when I'm older I would be competing in jiu jitsu. When I'm older I would be. Yeah you know um world ranked within jiu jitsu that wasn't really the goal for me i always just wanted to be competitive in whatever field i was in you know i was wanting to be yeah. competitive like jiu jitsu was the one thing that i kind of managed to sustain for my whole entire from childhood to adulthood the whole time i did it. you know like i said like it's not a skill set you build over a, a year or 18 months or a week you know yeah. it's, it's like you've got to commit a long hard time to become top of field than anything of course yeah. and um you know i did rugby football gymnastics at different levels um i mm. remember like i got invited into the swansea city squad for gymnastics um and immediately the first thing i said is oh what's like the time commitment and they were like oh like you have to be here this many hours this many days a week yeah and then i straight away i was like oh well that's in a class with jiu-jitsu <laughs> so I, I can't do it yeah. then, you know? so, because <laughs> jiu-jitsu was always the constant i always wouldn't miss jiu-jitsu practice i'd go two three times a week minimum and i'd always build it up yeah you know yeah so um i think that uh you know you've got to be like consistent for a longer period than people think you have yeah. And when I, when I was thinking about what I wanted to do, initially all I didn't want to do was work at nine to five. Yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't want to come out of school yeah. work nine to five. So like I said to myself, well, I'll try and do jujitsu if I can. Yeah. But if I can't, I was actually going to become a teacher. Now, okay. If you are a teacher and you listen to this, I'm sorry, <laughs> but they just get a lot of time off for the year. <laughs> so so what would you teach? Uh, maths or science. Oh, nice. So I, I speak Welsh. Yeah. Um, and my strong subjects are maths and science. Um, or sports, obviously, yeah. uh, but sports teachers, uh, you know, they're everywhere. You know, like they, yeah. they, they, everyone wants to be a sports teacher. Yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's the dream. <laughs> yeah. so, um, no, I thought to myself, you know, I could do PGC if it didn't go well with jiu-jitsu and then coach uh, or teach science or maths um, in a Welsh school because yeah. I know they're crying out for male Welsh teachers uh, everywhere at the time they were. Yeah. So I thought that could be a good secondary career for me. 
But the main reason I wanted to be a teacher is because I wanted the time off, like the six weeks and the two week gaps that they get, yeah. to go travel the world. So I've always wanted to go travel, I've always wanted to go Love see that. the world, I've always wanted to get out there and, and, and do stuff, you know? Yeah. So I was like, well, if I become a teacher, I'll just get you know, half the year off and go enjoy myself. Yeah, <laughs> no. So when I, when I went into jiu-jitsu and I started coaching, that wasn't, the goal wasn't to be an elite competitor, the goal was to not be like an average person, I suppose. You know, I didn't want to yeah. just fall into the category of like wake up, go to work, come home, eat, sleep, yeah. repeat. Yeah. and get trapped in that cycle you know and i think that's unfortunately society is really bad at trying yeah. to force that ideology on too many people you know they're like go yeah. to school go to university and then get a good job that you hate for 40 years so you can retire and enjoy 10 years of your life Literally. with no money do you yeah. mean like, like yeah. what's the what's the fun in that you know so like my primary goal was always just to be able to like quality of life quality of life over like money and anything else all day you know yeah yeah so um like good family time obviously i've got a wife um you know and i, I just wanted the enjoyment factor of life first and foremost of course and yeah. i knew a nine to five job was not going to be that yeah you know for example yeah. my wife when i first when we first actually got together she was actually uh a training accountant and she was working in an accountancy firm she got like a good internship mm -hmm. But every day she came home, she was just miserable. And she just didn't enjoy it. She just wasn't. Yeah. And I was like, why don't you just quit? And she was like, I, I can't just quit. And I was like, well, anyone could quit at any time. Of course, like, what about yeah. money? What about bills? And I was like, we can make that work after. Like, I earn X amount of money, which was just enough to cover both our bills yeah. in a month. Yeah. And I, she was like, well, 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 on top of that, I was like, it, it, right now that doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. You know, you just quit and we'll just, we'll just do something. Yeah. You know, and then yeah. she quit a job and then she helped me grow... Uh, the gym and yeah. we've never looked back but I said like it wasn't I never sat there and thought from my childhood like I'm going to be a competitor at this level mm -hmm. but I always wanted to not get stuck in the norm I you know see. Yeah. And I think that was yeah. my biggest driving factor for me yeah. for a lot of years once it's... I realised I could compete at a high level my yeah. driving factor changed because now I'm ambitious to the point where I feel like I could surpass anything I thought I could have done anyway yeah okay. so I've always surpassed what I felt I was going to achieve yeah so yeah. the driving factor for me has changed now because I can now try to almost be a leader in my field you know which is a different challenge in itself yeah no it's, it's interesting you said that because before we actually even started this podcast we were talking about like how like how amazing it is that you're doing something that you love which is really hard to find because most people are stuck in that robotic Yes. way of like living where they go to school like go yeah. to work nine to five come home do that for 40 years hate their life and then just yeah. you know retire I, then that's what like um i think the there's a saying somewhere i don't know who said it or what it was but essentially like you want to find the thing you love first yeah and then you want to find out how that thing you love can make you money that's it yeah like, like that yeah. and that's why i feel like everyone's goal should be like the problem is obviously with overheads and people's livelihoods and like rent mortgage or whatever not a lot of people have got the opportunity just to quit the job yeah. and then give it a go. That's it, but yeah. the problem is until you quit your job and give it a go, um, there's that episode in Friends where they're on with a fear making Rachel quit so she can get a better <laughs> job, you know? But I say this to everyone, I'm like, man, just get the fear. Yeah. Just get it. Just quit your job, get the fear and pursue a passion because you'll never commit harder to a passion when you've got the fear. When yeah. you've got a, like a cushy job or like... A, was perceived as a cushy job where you're, yeah. you're, you're earning money I never feel like you'd commit the same as if making that work would be the difference between paying your bills or not yeah no, that's, no? that's so powerful yeah no I, I totally agree with that um, so just we'll, we'll touch back on that as well um, I just want to talk to you about um, obviously you mentioned that you know you have a you have a twin brother called Josh Williams yep. who's all, obviously you know phenomenal at jiu-jitsu like yourself um, what was that like, like growing up with him, like having the competitiveness or like, what's it like even now, like um, having a brother at that so same level as you? Uh, I'm the younger, the, uh, we're twin brothers, but I'm the younger one. Yeah. Um, he's like, um, to be fair, I, I think he's an incredible person. Like he's, he's, he's really intelligent, um, frustratingly intelligent actually. Like in school, he would like, in my opinion, put a lot of life after me and like yeah. basically like all my grades, he would always get the grade up. So, like, when we did OGCs, I'd get, like, A's and B's. He'd get A's, stars and A's. You know, like, uh, when we did our A-levels, I'd get, like, I had A's and B's, and then he had, like, all A's. Do you mean? Yeah. And then our degree, like, I got a third in my in my physics degree, uh, and he got a 2-2. Two, two. 
But again, like we both do jiu-jitsu, we both run gyms, and our passion was not that. And he didn't attend for the third year, pretty much. Yeah. And still got two two. Do you mean I can't? I can't explain him really. Um, he, like he's really, really intelligent and really, uh, like if he puts his mind to something, he's very, very good at it. Yeah. Yeah. So like, um, in jujitsu, he always used to beat me. So when we were fourteen, fifteen years old, I told him what we'd go to. He'd always win it, and I might win, or I might. Um, I might get to second place or I might yeah. just lose, you know, one of the earlier rounds. Yeah. Um, so, like, he was really, like, for me, really inspirational to, to, to watch and, like, kind of follow. Um, and then when I, uh, unfortunately, I went away to uni and uh, he kind of got injured. Uh, he had to have knee surgery and a few other things. Mm-hmm. And kind of, like, where he, not decelerated, kind of, like, where the gas kind of came off for him because of uh, personal reasons and injuries and other stuff. Uh, kind of like I hit the accelerator all the time you know like I really yeah. committed that was a point in my life where I decided to make the kind of that, that fear that leap of faith and just go right I'm going to commit everything to this yeah. you know like I went to uni but I spent all my student loan all my overdraft everything on just just going to different places to compete every weekend you know yeah. every time there was a tournament I, I'd be in the tournament you I mean not all the time yeah. I'd always go compete and I kind of looked at it as investing in myself of course yeah. Um, where at that time my brother wasn't able to compete and kind of get that push and invest in himself um, so kind of the gap grew between us um, and then when I came back from uni went to separate universities he was in Swansea he was in Cardiff we did both study in physics so uh, I came back and he um, I was probably better at jiu-jitsu at that time um, yeah. um, of our lives and uh, he put on a little bit of weight after his injury, uh, so he wasn't really in a position to compete again. But then as soon as, literally within, when he made the decision, uh, he was pulled about the time, when he made the decision to come back and compete within six months, he won like 20 goals or, so, or something yeah. ridiculous. So, like, <laughs> as soon as he made the decision to commit to it, he, he excelled at it very, very fast. Yeah. Uh, now he's a black, uh, BJ black belt and I like, train with him every day. Uh, we're just really grateful to share the mats with each other, to be honest, I think like, the competition aspect is still there. We're definitely competitive with each other. Yeah. But before, I feel like the competitiveness was a little bit better and um, to kind of prove a point who was better than each other. Yeah. Um, but now, I don't think we view it like that at all. You know, the competitiveness is, is, is healthy to the point where we're looking to drive each other and motivate each other. Yeah. Um, because we could both be high achievers within the field and uh, we can kind of, be there together, you know, like, yeah. I think, yeah. like, like, I always remember my grandpa's, I was like, oh, it'd be amazing to see, like, you guys playing, like, the Welsh rugby squad together, when we play rugby, you know, he was like, oh, it'd be amazing to watch you guys be on the field, Can imagine two of you, Williams brothers, out there competing in rugby, Yeah. and, like, although that was a, a good vision and a good dream that we could have had, um, like, competing side by side on Polaris or EBI or any of the big shows, really, yeah. uh, or at Worlds or ADCC, uh, I think that would be the most incredible thing ever. Do you know if we achieved that? Yeah. Like for me, like that would that would supersede anything I could win personally solo. Do you know like if I could win by course, myself, yeah. like competing with my brother alongside me, like me out against the Williams brothers or whatever, like that would supersede virtually anything I could achieve solo. You know, he's been there yeah. for all my, my biggest achievements in my life, um, and it'd be cool to share one together. Together, you know? yeah. So no, I could definitely nice, see you know? that. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's great. I, mean, I, I think having twin brothers like the best thing in the world. Yeah. Well, I always say if, if like I'm currently not pro having a child right now, uh, but if I was to have a child, like I'd be praying it was twins. Yeah, like yeah, I think I think so. Man. Like, I think having a twin is like the best thing ever. Like it's just uh, it's just it's a different life. Doing it's a different yeah, upbringing. Like it yeah. makes everything about life um, better for sure. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. Yeah, no, it's, like I, I always see like your brother always comes to your events and stuff, and he's always cornering you, which is you know great to see as well. He's always there for uh, you, and you're always there for him yeah. as well. I can't explain like the coach, the coach. Um, you know, we balance three relationships. You know, we got a coach athlete relationship where yeah. I coach him, he coaches me, so yeah. we both play the, the two roles to each other. You know, like sometimes I a coach to him, and I tell him like he shouldn't do this, should do that when yeah. he's competing, and he does it for me. Yeah, and then we've got the brother brother relationship. And then we've got the athlete athlete relationship where we're competitive on the mats against each other. And then we've got to coach each other. And then when we leave, we go have a brother relationship in yeah. <laughs> the house and in family events, you know. So it is a juggle. Um, but we've definitely, over the last two years, like we've definitely uh, got to a spot now where I feel like uh, everywhere we're going to go from now, it's going to be upwards, you know, everything's going to improve. Yeah. And, and hopefully he will achieve what he sets out to achieve, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I say the same to everyone like 
in your head, whatever you believe, you know, you set out to achieve, you might achieve it and then still not be happy. Of course, yeah. And that's like, yeah. uh, I don't know if you know, but like, it's a well, like, pretty, pretty well known, but like Olympics, for example, mm-hmm. um, most athletes after the Olympics are depressed. Why is that? Because they reach what they believe is the pinnacle of their sport. Uh, and yeah. whether the outcome's good or bad, like there's no, there's no more up on I the mountains. See. I mean, so I see, yeah. like that's the problem is it is that like it's it's a very difficult, um, a div- div- difficult idea. Like yeah. I think that's why some people don't set goals and don't don't be ambitious. Yeah. Because if you achieve them, you might be you might have a momentary happiness, or if you don't achieve them, you'll be unhappy. That's it. Yeah. But then there's the other catch where you could achieve them, and still be unhappy anyway. Yeah, I see. Do you mean that, see, that, yeah. That's what I think is mad. Is that's why don't people. That's why like, if you do think with Jeff Bezos, for example, yeah, like with Amazon, like right now in this current climate, he is killing it. Yeah, but he could at any day say that's enough, can he? Of like course, he could literally yeah. be any day. He could be like that's enough, and we've reached what we we set out to do. Mm-hmm. But he might. He must have reached. He reached that years ago. He's yeah. always surpassed anything he thought he probably was going to do. Ooh. Yeah. But that's so, it. So when's he gonna stop? And it yeah, of course. Everyone, yeah. everyone else says like, how much, how much richer does he have to be? But it, he's not chasing that though. In my opinion, in like in my personal opinion, from what I believe yeah. the mindset would be, yeah. I don't believe he's chasing that. He's not chasing like he's just beating every every time he sets a goal and gets to it. He sets another one. He's just beating it. Yeah. it. Do you mean that he's just beating? And it's like that hungry like achieving like mentality that he's probably got. Yeah, you know, yeah. He must have to do what he does. No, of course, yeah. Like I, I, I agree with you because he's so rich and like he, he definitely he doesn't need any more well, money. Just stop, but, yeah, he can just stop whenever he, he wants. Stop and just buy an island. Yeah. <laughs> like fill it with all the people he enjoys. Probably, probably build build people or whatever. Yeah. So he can do whatever he wants right now. But he probably not. He's probably still reading books, like making good choices, pushing yeah. hard to make good decisions, like and working hard. I mean, he probably not just sitting with his feet up, partying and loving life. Yeah, no, I, I agree, and like. Just touching on that, like touching on, uh, you know, the, having that winning mentality and, um, you know, like I think one thing that differentiates you from, you know, other people, this is why I call you a, like an uncommon person, is your work ethic. Like I think that like even in training, when we're in training and like I, I watch you train or whatever like that, you, the way you dig deep is is phenomenal. Like it's just crazy because like you push other people to want to train more, like train yeah. harder. And like David Goggins said this quote, it's like, don't stop when you're tired, stop when you're done. And that's you in a nutshell. Cause like, yeah, I, I would like to agree with that. Like I think, yeah. but I, I like, so especially when it comes to athletes, yeah. um, I think a lot of people have got a misconception of what training hard is or training smart or whichever way they want to look at their training. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people like, in my personal opinion, believe that like showing up I compare it to school. When I teach seminars, or people ask me questions exactly on this point. Yeah. I always say about school. I always say to them, like, right, did you get 100% of all your tests? And they say no. And I'm like, why? And they're like, oh, well, you know, I tried. And I was like, well, you were there. You know, you spent the time in the classroom. Mm-hmm. Other people got 100%, so why didn't you? Yeah. And the difference is, is how hard you tried, how you took the information in, and what you did with the information. So yeah. like, when you come to a jiu-jitsu class, like man, the amount of time people spend wasting is unreal. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. But then they say they want to be good. Yeah. It, but it's li- it's literally like that meme where people go like, oh, um, I love I'd love to achieve a blue belt one day, and it's like, well, your report card says otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But to me, like, like that that it's a, it's a funny meme. And it makes sense. But even then, though, like the the idea of oh, you know, like if you're in class. You're progressing faster than the person who's on the set. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And although I can, I understand the idea behind it. it it's 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 inaccurate. It's not right because turning up to the gym yeah. is the minimum amount of effort required to progress. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. ensure progression because mm-hmm. I could go to say do a degree on something in French. I could turn up to every single lecture, sit the exam. And get zero percent. It's possible. It's possible yeah. to attend every single thing you're meant to do, and mm-hmm. still get zero percent. Yeah, yeah. So it's not about turning up. It's more than that. Isn't and it? I think yeah. that's the problem a lot of people get when it comes to, especially well, anything in life, but especially when it comes to sports or anything like that, 
is they think turn up and then when they're not getting better they go right I know what I've got to do mm-hmm. I've got to do more so they turn up more classes and they're like right I, I'm not getting as, but as good as I want to get I know what yeah. I'll do I'll do some more again so they add more sessions into their schedule and more sessions and more sessions yeah. and that's not how can you not understand that's not the prime like that's not the issue that's yeah. not the source of your lack of progression mm-hmm. and especially for example I believe MMA is probably one of the, the worst sports for it where athletes are killing their bodies like mm-hmm. battering their bodies to the point of almost like unrepair when they're older Yeah, you know to, yeah. to put themselves into a really bad position when they're older um, and potentially for no money whatsoever for no end goal payday yeah. and they're killing themselves and the reason they kill themselves is because they believe turning up and getting that grind like sore feeling is progression yeah it's interesting that's that not is, yeah. what progression is like man when you're in school if you don't go home mentally fatigued well you didn't go to school yeah you, you know just I mean? turned up you turned up <laughs> yeah and that's what like when you're saying about that like the get the job done well my job's never done and when i'm on the mats mm. like i want to be the hardest worker in the room yeah i don't want to look at yeah. someone else and think man i don't want to spar with that guy today because he outwork me yeah. i'm not getting outworked physically or mentally do you mean I, I i refuse to like it isn't and if i do get outworked by someone well great because they just give me a benchmark you know they give me a goal to now outwork them, yeah. you know, and yeah. that's 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 what I want. I want a room full of people who share the ideology of it's not about turning up. Yeah, anyone can turn up. Of course, yeah. You no, know, that's, that's so powerful. And like, yeah, like just touching back on that, it's like when you're there as well. You know, like you're never the type of person to say, oh, "I'm not gonna do this round." You know, I'm tired. You know, you're always no. So you're always in there. Like you're not. For the sport I do in particular, like yeah. for jiu-jitsu, um, I talk about this a ton when I teach other people. Um, but for example, there's, there's a lot of like um, advantages you could get in a physical sport. You could be stronger, faster, fitter, yeah. more flexible. You know, there's a lot of attributes which contribute to outcomes within sport. Mm. But if, for example, you could... This way, like, for, do you know, like, pound for pound ratings, like, in, yeah, uh, yeah. in like, af- uh, in, like um, contact sports, mm-hmm. they're interesting, but in reality, the only way to do a pound for pound rating would to be, I call it, like, the Hercules effect. So, have you watched the cartoon Hercules? Yeah, yeah. Years ago, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Do you know, he takes, like, the serum and then becomes mortal for a day? Like, he gets, like, human strength yeah, from that? Yeah, So, he becomes human for a day, yeah? And, obviously, the Titans then can, can beat him up, mm-hmm. right? So, the reason I think about this, and the reason I think it's, it's a really good approach to the way you do your training and everything else is imagine everybody on the mat could take a serum Mm -hmm. that equal out your attributes so imagine every single person at the start of a class took a tablet took a serum whatever yeah and now all your attributes say you were in a game like a computer game all your attributes have been set to like a default five Mm -hmm. so every single person across the whole board is on a five yeah is what you know in your head technical knowledge would that still sufficiently allow you to beat everyone in the room right and I always believe with me I would as in I don't think yeah. I, I don't think I beat someone because I'm stronger I don't think I beat someone because I'm more flexible I believe I use the right tool at the right time yeah yeah. for the combat sport I'm in of course yeah so that's why I think that's an interesting argument because when you say about like I wouldn't sit out wrong because I'm tired yeah I'm not, physically I could be exhausted but mentally I could still be as sharp as I need to be you yeah. know what I mean yeah. mentally I could be exhausted but physically I could be as sharp as I need to be you've yeah. got to look at the other person yeah. and you've got to realise where you know you your work rate is and where to put your work rate yeah you know same as like when you spend spend calories shopping for food to yeah. that's where I look at it I look at like <laughs> if I went to a shop and I had money well I need this much money to cover this much and then everything else is extra so when I have calories, I have my protein, I, I hit all the macros I need, and mm. then I have something extra on top. Yeah. And when I'm in jiu-jitsu, if I've got this amount of energy in my body to expend, mm-hmm. well, if I expend it in the wrong place, I'm going to get the wrong results. Yeah. So if I spend the energy in the right place, it doesn't matter whether I'm tired, fatigued, injured, bad arm, bad shoulder, bad foot. If, if I protect that part yeah. of me and expend my energy in the right place, yeah. I should be able to create a positive outcome theory yeah you know? but yeah. that's the way i approach training all the time is that like that's why my work rate is i believe is better than everyone else in the rooms yeah but it's not because i work harder it's because i work smarter at working hard 
see. You know? yeah. And that's why. And then when you you know when your coach comes round, you see this all the time in different places. Like uh, someone will be like, oh, come on, let's go, let's go, let's push harder. And weirdly, what's that person then do? Make a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> because working harder isn't physical. Working harder is a mental thing. It means yeah. you've got to push um, your mental capacity another level up. Yeah. And then output that physically. Yeah. You know, no. For me, that's what working harder is. It's about you, you pushing harder with your brain to create good decisions. Um, that's so interesting. But, yeah, because... Because I always, I always like the way I always looked at it is like you know if you, you if you work hard if you work hard you know you'll achieve more than um, the other person right but it's all it is working smarter as well and it's Hard, not just working harder is it? Man, it has to be. Well, you think yeah. about it, like if every person in the world was limited to five sessions a week, yeah. right? Every single person in the world can only do five sessions or five hours of whatever passion it is they enjoy within a week. Mm-hmm. Like it's similar to the the theory that um, if you could reset the world right now. And you give every single human ten thousand pound, who do you think would be rich? The the rich people that was rich before, right? A lot, <laughs> yeah. a lot, a lot of rich people would get rich again. Yeah. A lot of poor people would get poor again. Yeah. From decision making. Yeah. So again, if you had five sessions a week of doing jujitsu and everyone got reset to zero, It'd in be my the, opinion, the, the best, the, 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 yeah. the guys who were the best would get the best again, and the guys who uh, were average would stay average again. Yeah. Because it's not how many hours you get given; it's what you do with those five hours. Yeah, that's it's powerful. And yeah, that's what I I believe truly when it comes to uh, being very succeeding, very good within a field mm-hmm. is you, you can only do you can ask for more time for sure, but you can also do better with the time you're given. Yeah. So yeah. when someone says to me, "Oh, but I can only train three times a week," I'm like, "Why? Are you, why are you looking at like the negative? Like you yeah. go, man, I can train three times a week. What work can we get done?" Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that's what I think is what people need to change their mindset on is the fact that for progress, you've got to. It's about it's about the, you know your, the the time and effort you put in for what you've got, and that that's that's all there is to progress. No one could. There's no way people can deny that's what progress is. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree with you. That's 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 so interesting. Um, so I I, I do want to touch on um two other factors now as well. Um, so fear and failure. Yeah. So um, there's a really good quote that I saw the other day. So I'm like you. I, I love like looking at quotes and stuff. Uh, you know who Steve Harvey is? I don't unfortunately know. Who oh, he's got like his own TV show in, in America. He's like huge. He used to be a comedian as well. Oh, I actually I know about you. Yeah, and uh, he, he said that uh, the fear of failure is the number one cause of failure. So I just wanted to ask you. I, I've asked you this before, but um, I just want to ask you again. What do you think is the number one reason why people fail? Say so the quote again. Um, the fear of failure is the number one cause of failure. Okay, so, right. So, I actually, I speak about this with a couple of my students all the time. Yeah. And, um, for example, John Jones is yeah. probably one of the best examples in the world of this. Okay. So, he deliberately parties or does drugs or does something wrong in a fight camp. So that in his head, if he loses, he's got a scapegoat. Uh, okay. okay, so this yeah. is like this is like a well-known fact, right? But the idea of that alone is insane. But what you think about it is totally logical. Because I see this all the time. But if every single person, like if, if I did everything that Matthew was meant to do, I turned to all my classes, my mm-hmm. tr- nutrition's on point, I do all the yoga I'm meant to do, I do all the recovery I'm meant to do, I lift all the weights, and you know, I literally, I literally commit ten years of my life to doing exactly the 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 best model in the world of how to be the best athlete. Yeah. And I fail. How do you psychologically move forward? You don't, do you? So that's the problem. So, like, yeah. I I believe almost every athlete sabotages himself in some way. And this is why I believe someone like Gordon Ryan, for example, is exceptional. Because even when he talks, you can tell the unwavering confidence he's got in himself. Yeah. But the reason I believe he's got unwavering confidence in himself is because he doesn't he doesn't have the fear of putting a negative into his life, so he can kind of accept failure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so which, he doesn't have a scapegoat, basically. No, I don't think he yeah. does, and that's why he's incredible. You know, he is incredible. Like you know, he yeah. said like Brazil. You know, I've said it before on a different. I went to speak to someone else. 
like he you know he kind of gave a blanket statement of Brazilians are lazy and they don't treat pro sports as a sport that uh, pro, pro jiu-jitsu as a sport you know mm-hmm. which is almost true because if you look at any other sport like if you're an NFL player a basketball player or whatever and you said oh what did you do in the lead up to your match with this world champion mm-hmm. and they're like I partied in, I partied in Rio for three weeks yeah like what <laughs> like how like how does that make sense like that's not that's not a thing do you know what I mean that's not yeah. what sports athletes meant to do yeah but the reason people do it, in my honest opinion, is because the fear of, of doing everything right and still losing. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a really... Dog, like, it, essentially, it, you're almost showing yourself where your ceiling is. Mm-hmm. And nobody wants to believe that their ceiling is where it's at. Everyone wants to believe yeah. they can achieve past it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As I said, and every time you reach the ceiling, you go, oh, I've achieved this. That's why I thought I, I always wanted to achieve. You'll immediately put, put your ceiling higher. Yeah. So when you keep doing these like flaws in your training camp or your flaws in your life or whatever else you're doing to ex- almost accept failure, um, I don't think it's because people want to fail. It's because I think people are, are f- afraid. People are scared of the idea of doing everything right and failing. Yeah. So it's very similar to that quote. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's um, interesting. But it's yeah. actually what's why I, I, have you um, have you seen Coach Carr? Yeah, I love that film. Yeah. yeah, one of my favorite films. Do you know the the deepest fear quote? Yeah, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. That's the one. Yeah, fear. yeah. So like, my personal opinion is it's it's that that's that's what that quote is saying. Yeah, it's, it's saying that obviously everyone's scared of doing everything right, and the one in for example in Coach Car references the ideas of putting other people down. Yeah. So to make yourself feel better, one of the easiest ways is actually not to make yourself improve, but is to put person next to you down you know so yeah. like, like you feel like a bigger person at that, that given time you know yeah but yeah. i think you could flip that on his head and the reason the court and coach guards really good is because i feel like me competing at a high level mm-hmm. doesn't make other people around me feel like they can never achieve it it's actually the opposite it makes people want to achieve it it makes you want to push and realize there's a different world out there than the one that you kind of boxed into before yeah. You know, which I think is uh, a brilliant idea. But when it comes to fear in sports, I think uh, fear of failure should only be what you expect of yourself. Yeah. I said, like, I got, you know, I get matches against tough guys all the time, super hard opponents. And in reality, I'm almost always expected to lose. Um, but, man, if I lose, what, what, I don't know, what, what, what's that prove? I'm not a loser, man. I, I, I put myself out there and tried something no one else was willing yeah. to try anyway. Yeah. Do you mean like, uh, you know, the whole idea that anyone steps in the cage in the UFC or anyone who gets on the mats or a high level event or whatever, you know, they're winning before they step on. That's not true because you won't, you won't actually win the match. Yeah, you know? of course. Yeah. But are they doing something that 99.999% of the population wouldn't do? Yes, yeah. 100%. Yeah. And, you know, they should be accommodated for that because they are, put, they are facing fear and they, they are like legitimately... Um, set themselves up into a position where they could either elevate themselves or they could uh, spiral you into yeah. negativity. So it is a tough position to be in. No, of course, yeah. And like, um, you know, like you, you just mentioned that, you know, you've, you've, you've versed like a lot of tough opponents, right? Like, so I got a list here. It's like the legend Imanari, Gio Martinez, Ethan Krenenstein, Kedro Tolo, Joe Miao, and, and the list goes on. Um, so the question that I have for you is, what's your thought process and how do you feel when you're about to like step onto the mats to fight guys like this? Like, Is there ever like a sense of fear? Oh, okay, so I'm honest about it, but it doesn't matter who I've got a match with. Um, yeah. I'm just petrified the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> but... I'm not afraid like anything bad's gonna happen to me. I'm afraid that I'll do myself a disservice in front of everyone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that that my I'm I'm not got a fear of losing because people lose course, all the time. Yeah. Like it's not a fear of losing. My fear is like imagine gripping up with someone and knowing that even if you press pause on their life and you had another eighteen months mm-hmm. to train. Imagine gripping up with someone and knowing that even if you give me eighteen months, I still couldn't beat this guy. Yeah, that's my fear. My fear is when I go, when I when I spar with someone or when I have a match with someone, that I will realize my ceiling. Yeah, I mean that's that's my fear when I go compete. Is that not that I'm going to lose or not that I'm going to make a fool of myself? 
my fear is realistically is knowing that I can never beat them. Yeah. And I've never, I'm not coming against, I'm not coming against it so far. Everyone I've lost to, I've always felt, man, like no, I can beat this guy for sure. Yeah. You know, not, obviously people I've beaten, I've felt like, oh man, for, to be fair, they could actually beat me on their day. Yeah. But yeah. you know, I'm still at that level. Yeah, of course. But one day I might come up against a guy and go, man, you could give me whatever you want, and I can never beat this guy. So that's my fear usually leading up to a big match like that. I'm always like, I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh man, I get so nervous. I'm nervous right now thinking about it. Yeah. But I've got a match in, you know, a week's time. Yeah. I'm even thinking of the person I've got to compete against. I'm like, what happens if he just beats me outright? What happens if he just shows me? Like, I would say like in MMA, do you like getting knocked out? Mm -hmm. Say you get knocked out in 10 seconds. Horrific way to lose. But in my opinion, that's a far better way to lose than being dominated for five, three, five minute rounds. Why is that? Because imagine the psychological approach you've got to that. Anyone could knock someone out in any given circumstance in life. Like, as in, like, yeah. the, the idea of puncher's chance. I'm not saying that that's what that is. Yeah. But let's take Conor McGregor Aldo. Yeah. How many times can Conor McGregor, like, repeat that exact process? Never, probably. You like, know, they fight a hundred yeah. times, it's not happening again, in my opinion. Yeah. But imagine Conor McGregor went out there and then outboxed him, took him down, out cage wrestled him, out grappled him. Yeah. How does Aldo go back and go, right, we'll have a rematch, give me six months, I'll change my game plan. How does he do that? Yeah. But, he, but, he's yeah. realised that that athlete is just past him. That athlete is better than him. Yeah. And that's, like, when I compete, like, my biggest fear is that, is exactly. that realising that I'm not, I can't achieve what I'd like to achieve. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to be on ADCC, which would be the top. You know, like the Olympics for the sport. You know, I would want to be there and show that I'm, I can compete with the the best of the best. Yeah. And right now, I feel like I belong there. Of course, yeah. But I could lock up with someone and go, do you know what? Actually, give this guy my spot, man. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not there. This guy is, you know. And that's the problem to compete for me is that like that's the fear, and like it gets like it can get really bad. You know, I can get to the point where I'm like, oh man, I might just like get injured in the gym. Just yeah. so I don't have to compete. Do you mean like, like really, really, really bad thoughts? I, I'd be like, ah oh man, like what if I just like, like crash my car into a wall or something? Car yeah. crash, no, no torment. Do you mean like, yeah. like I do get scared of competing. Yeah. But I said it's not. The real fear is the fact that the the ceiling could happen at any point, um, and I feel like lo losing is not what people's true fear is as an athlete. As an athlete, in my, my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Like it's just knowing that you can never get to where you want to get. Yeah. Unfortunately, until now, I've not really come across that. Uh, but, you know, the list of names I've competed against is massive. And if you check the rest of my record, I've competed against, like, numerous world champions. Yeah. Um, and I've never rolled with someone. And I felt like, man, I could never, ever beat this guy. You know, so yeah. right now, it's a positive for me. Of course, but, you know, yeah. you definitely, like, I know there's guys out there who've competed. And they're, like, before the match, they're super confident. They're like, man, I could beat anyone you put in front of me. And then they, they get hold of the next level up. And then that person manhandles them or, or you know, puts them away. And they're like, man, I, yeah. <laughs> like, you need to get, I need to go back to drone board. Yeah. And yeah. That's, that's the issue, you know. That's where I kind of, um, for weeks before a match, it takes me, like, I go up and down. I'm always like, I, go, I get a, spirit, a big spirit of confidence. I'm like, man, I'm going to beat this guy. Mm -hmm. Like, against Ethan Kranz, and the truth is, I was literally like, all right, let's just go out there, get beaten up to 15 minutes. And then collect a paycheck and go home. Yeah. You know, I was at that point. I was literally like, man, like, this is a big step up. He's super tough. We're going to lose. But that's cool. We'll just go in there and show that, you know, I'm not terrible. Mm -hmm. But then the first two minutes, man, I just started, I took him down. And I was like, I am actually yeah. going to win. I was like, I'm actually going to win. <laughs> I can feel it. I like, I tell myself in the match, and I've done this with loads of people. Like, I was mm -hmm. shouting me out. I was literally looking at the score, but I was like, head on score. And I was like, that no, man, this can't, like, this cannot be happening. Like, who will pay the guy off, like, to, like, yeah. to, like yeah. I just couldn't believe that, like, I'm actually at the level of that, you know, but, yeah. like, it, it, there's pros and cons to it in there, you know, course, massive highs, yeah. massive lows, but the fear for sure, man, I, I don't know if any other competitors, you know, like, uh, people do get nervous or not and portray in different ways, mm -hmm. but for me, like, I can't foresee a single match in my career where I'm not going to be nervous. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, no, that's interesting. And like, uh, I did see a, another quote about fear, and it says, "Fear can have two meanings, right? It can either mean forget everything and run, or um, face everything and rise." Yeah. And I thought that's really interesting, right? Because if you if you just forget everything and run, you're never going to know what's on the other side of fear. 
Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. So, and if you face it, you know, you might fail, you face it again, you might fail, you might fail, but then eventually you will rise, right? Oh, that's why, like, I'm happy yeah. to, I think, uh, failure is part of success. Of course. You don't yeah. have to fail, for sure. And yeah. if I fail, I'll go back and I'll see what I did wrong, and then I'll try to overcome it and, and face it again, you yeah. know? Uh, I said, like, doing that over and over again, I got no problem with. My problem is if I lock up with someone and you go, why well, yeah. go back to the drawing board? And there's no drone board because yeah. you know you you know in here when you know deep down yeah. you give me whatever time you want I can't I can't beat that yeah you know like there must be like lifting records and other stuff people got to you know like in all all aspects of all fields where people go like oh you know this would be the the ultimate goal mm-hmm. and then when you try to achieve a percentage of that and you go man that's that's not attainable <laughs> yeah it's not attainable yeah. you know so it's interesting yeah and um you know what fascinates me as well is not when like not when people are winning and like how they react when they win, but how they react when they lose. And, you know, obviously we've all, you know, been at a stage where we've lost or like, yep. you know, we've been defeated in life. Like, how do you, how do you bounce back from that? Like, so what's your mindset when, when it comes to that? So it's much easier. Losing is much easier in my opinion. Okay. Because when you lose, like the, st- the stimulus for me to go compete again is immediate. Yeah. Like I literally have, I've, I've actually done it. I've literally been at a tournament, lost, and driven home, got on my computer, looked for the next tournament that's nearest to me, and booked there immediately. Yeah. Like for me, like losing is the biggest motivator to want to compete again. Because once you've lost, mm-hmm. well, you're going to win again at some point. Yeah. So that's upwards. Yeah. yeah. Like I went, I, you know, I, I actually, my, I, had a bro- I had a winning streak going for 18 months. I hadn't lost a match since I fought Gio Martinez three mm-hmm. years ago. And a year and a half ago, Richard Alcon beat me um, by a point in Kasai. Yeah. And that was my first loss I'd had in 18 months. Yeah. And it wasn't, it, man, it was, it, was, it was unreal. Even though I was furious at myself for my performance, but I literally felt like a weight had just left, left gone. I was like, man, this is, um, I, I can't wait to go again. Yeah. I was like, put yeah. me in there again because I was, I was so afraid to lose because I, I felt like I'd feel like a loser. But I didn't feel like a loser at all. I felt like someone who'd gone out there given everything they got yeah. and tried my best. Well, I actually didn't try my best that day. Yeah. But for that day, I tried my best. But yeah. was it my best? No. no. Yeah. And that's the reason when I lost then, I already knew that if you give me a rematch with that guy, I could beat him. Yeah. And I actually did rematch him. And I did beat him. And it was very good. <laughs> yeah, and I beat him yeah. more convincingly than he beat me. Yeah. But that was my point. It was within that loss, I realised that my ceiling is above his. Yeah. In my opinion. You know, that, that's why I, re- I realised he was not my ceiling. Yeah. And when I lost to him, it actually inspired me and gave me a lot more, a bigger boost to just go back out there, train hard and just compete against him again. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why competing against new people is the scariest process for me. If you, say it was a rematch against someone that I knew I could beat, um, well, I'd t- you'd take it any day, wouldn't you? Of course, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but once you've beaten someone and then they want a rematch, if you know it's close and you're like, man, if I give this guy a rematch, you could beat me this time. Yeah. That's nervous. Because I mean, yeah. you're going to give yeah. away a win that you've already got. So, um, I think uh, when you lose, uh, I, you know, I've, only, I've, I've lost one match every year for the last three years. And every time I've lost, I've never, ever gone off that mat and thought, man, I don't know if this is for me. Yeah. Every time I've lost, yeah. I've gone, man, you'll probably be back in the next week. I can't wait. Yeah. You know? That's powerful. Yeah, no, that's interesting to hear. Um, so, just, just to, uh, you know, a couple more questions now. Um, so, let's say if someone is, is hesitant to actually start jiu-jitsu, like... So I remember when I came, I came to CRA like six years ago, right? And I only came for like two sessions. Yeah. I was in college at the time and, um, I, and I, I always beat myself up for not sticking at it because now I've been doing it for two years and like I've been telling all my other friends about it to like start it because yeah. it's so powerful, I think, for like mental health and other benefits as well. Um, what would you say to that person who's hesitant to actually start like jiu-jitsu or, or combat sport? Uh, so jiu-jitsu for me obviously is like, it's one of my biggest loves in life. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine not being uh, with it. You know, I, I wouldn't want to give it up for anything, for yeah. sure. You know, um, and you have to be competitive to do it. No, you have to want to win. No, do you, you know, do you have to be confrontational. No, you know, the, you know, the idea of fight or flight. Yeah. For example, okay, this is a really, in, in my opinion, it's an interesting example. So, like, I like to, I have fought MMA and I want to fight MMA again. Yeah. In a fight or flight situation. I am not fight. I'm flight. Like I'm not confrontational mm-hmm. on the surface. I yeah. don't. I, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't want to fight another person if I could yeah. avoid it at all costs. Yeah. Because how like 
it, how can you guarantee an outcome of a fight? You can't, right? No, of course not. Like in a in any situation or in any situ- in any position of life where you can't guarantee an outcome, you, you know, realistically, if you wouldn't really want to put yourself in that position anyway. Hmm. But with MMA, I would put myself in that position because I want to test my jiu-jitsu out in a confrontational, controlled environment. Mm-hmm. It's the closest I'll ever get to, like, a legitimate fight, as in, like, a street altercation with rules and someone to stop the fight if it got too far. Yeah. Because, you know, you do hear stories where someone gets, like, one punch, one killed on the street. Yeah, You, know, you do hear yeah, them, you yeah? Do, yeah. So the reason I'm saying this is, like, the idea of coming to jiu-jitsu of kind of anything that you want to get involved with is that like you just want to like test yourself you want to just go out there and do something different it's, a, it's it's in a room full of people who are like-minded who are yeah. the same orientation as you like do you do you have to stick in it no mm. uh, like do i think it's great for everyone yes yeah so you know like the the idea of fight or flight for me is that like you just can't give everything a goal, you know, course, in a yeah. situation where you can, like, would I try almost any, like, do it like a shark, do it like a shark cage, you dive in the sea? Yeah, yeah. I, I would, I would 100% love to do that. Yeah. If I knew the outcome of it wasn't death or serious paralysed or this or that, yeah. a risk for sure, but if I knew the outcome of something new to try wasn't going to severely change my life in a negative way, why would you say no? Yeah. So yeah. the, when it comes to jiu-jitsu and people come to try it, personally myself, there's no reason to not try it. Yeah, I, I agree with you because like, I think it's such like, jiu-jitsu especially, it's like, it is kind of like a gentle sport. It's not like MMA where you'll, get, you'll come and like you'll get punched in the face. Like, yeah, but you, you have control over what you're sure, doing. For sure, but you know, a new person can come and try MMA and not know they loved her all along. Yeah. Like, any yeah. new, but I'm not all about jujitsu in, in in general. Like as yeah. I think jujitsu is the best. I, would I want people, more people to jujitsu? Obviously. Yeah, of course. But yeah. if you are sitting at home or you're sitting anywhere and you're thinking, man, I've always wanted to try this out. Yeah. What's the worst that can happen? What's stopping you? What is the yeah. worst that can happen? Yeah. It's because of the fight or flight in you. It's because you you choosing the fl- you you're choosing the reaction of not putting yourself in a position where yeah. you can feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. But. And I know, like, for example, a lot of people have anxiety, depression, all other stuff. And I know it's not easy to say, like, snap out of it. And in fact, course, I think it's inferior yeah. when people take that approach. Course, I don't think yeah. that's how you should approach someone with uh, a mental health issue. Yeah. Yeah. But for me, there's, like, there's no logic in not putting yourself into a controlled environment with other people who just want the same thing as you, which is passionate about uh, a field, any field. It could be anything. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, I'm passionate about all the other stuff and would I want to be doing that more frequently and pursue it? 100%. But I haven't got the chance, the chance because I'm doing jiu-jitsu so much and I'm yeah. putting my life to this. Yeah. But for anyone who's wanting to try jiu-jitsu, honestly, you, like, like it's just one step. Yeah. It's only it's one step away. All you got to do is walk in the gym and try it. But that's the same for any other activity. It's the hardest part, and it? Starting. Starting, starting is the, the hardest, hardest part. part. Yeah. You know, and that's why, like, I, I, the reason I'm using the fight or flight example is because even if you're fight or flight, it's a controlled environment where you can come yeah. and try it out without any repercussion. Yeah. There's no yeah. negative outcome to trying something new. Of course. Where, when you compare MMA to a street fight, <clears throat> it doesn't matter what you are. Yeah. This is controlled, this isn't. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So why would you attempt this? You can attempt this. <laughs> yeah, do, do you see what I'm saying? No, I see what you're saying. I, yeah. That's why I think everyone should try jiu because nothing, you've got nothing nothing's to Nothing's going to happen to you. Yeah, you've got nothing nothing's going to happen to you. Yeah. Um, okay, so thanks for that. Um, so just to wrap it up now, there's one question I really want to ask you, and I think a lot of people would like to ask you as well. Okay. Um, so obviously, who's one person you know you'd love to share the mats with? A lot of people want to see you with Nicky Ryan. Oh. But like, who's <laughs> one person that you would want to share the match with? All right, so like, I see people post this all like all, all time, and like people tag me and stuff. I'm like, oh, you should get this match. You should do this. You should yeah. do that. And like, my response is always the same. Man, look, I'm I love what I do. I love yeah. the I love the journey. I've loved everything about what I've done so far. Like, a match will happen between any two given athletes at any given time. Yeah, I'm not forcing any issues. I don't want to chase people down. Mm-hmm. Like no one's hiding from anyone. If people think that's the case, like when people post online, like ah, oh, so and so's running scared. 
I'm like, but the guy's a world champion. Like, yeah. <laughs> you always think he's running scared from a, like a little guy in Swansea. Yeah. Not a chance. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a, a most ridiculous statement I've ever heard in my life. Um, but what I like, I, I always think, like for me, the, I want to just compete as often as I can and just keep pursuing the passion that I'm doing. I'm not yeah. looking for any particular matches. If it was in terms of like anyone through history I could compete against, uh, I think obviously you'd have to choose Cabrinha or um, mm. half Mendes at my weight because they are definitely the kind of goats of those weight divisions. Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously, it, it's kind of like the age-old question like when you, like people compare rugby teams when they go like, oh, do you think like the 1980s Welsh team would beat like 2020 Welsh team? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, come on, bro. Like people got you better since then, though. But in jiu-jitsu, because it's such a new sport and it's quite young, mm-hmm. uh, like... And I think almost sports is not far off, almost like the best information it's going to get. I can't see how a new thing from science is going to come in and go like, oh my God, if all the athletes start having like 8.5 hours of sleep instead of eight, they're going to perform 10% better. I mean, like, yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. So, but whereas comparing 40 years of information, like teens back in 1990 or whatever, mm-hmm. like Olympics, when you compare the Olympics from like 20 years ago or when it started compared to now, like what they performed then compared to now is just two worlds apart. Yeah, of so course, they, yeah. Well, these people could not beat these people. Yeah. But could this generation of grapplers beat ten years ago generation of grapplers? It would be really interesting to see. Yeah. That Do would you, be interesting. But as in yeah. that exact version of them compared to the version of these people now, yeah. not a new upcomer taking out a legend. Yeah. Yeah. So I, mean, I don't want to fight half El Mendes. Well, he probably still will kill me now. To be fair to him, <laughs> but you know when I'm at my prime in like five, ten, five years time, maybe, and I, I, I maybe completed what I wanted to. Maybe I win ADCC. Yeah. Then I go, oh no, I'm competing as half El Mendes, and he's like four years old. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You don't want to do that when you want to compete against them when they're, they're prime. Yeah. Um, but I'm not looking for a match, man. I just want to take anything that comes, um, yeah. and just keep enjoying the journey. That's interesting. No, thank you so much. Thanks for um, obviously. You know, being on the podcast and thanks for listening, guys. Um, what I'll do is I'll I'll put Ash's um, social media in the description down below. So if you want to check him out as well, obviously he's got some fights coming up. Uh, go and show your support. Um, also, I'll put another thing in the uh, description down below. Is me and my friends we do this thing called Check In Tuesdays. Okay. And every Tuesday, what we do is we um, we've got like a group chat and we we just like send in like a voice message saying how we feel. Um, just get anything we, we want like off our chest so what I'll do is I'll leave the the link for that down below as well if you want to go check that out um, I've, I've started to do it in my workplace now as well it's really beneficial for like mental health yeah um, it's like a no judgmental uh, zone so so yeah so thanks again Ash and um, I hope you guys enjoyed and that Ash has provided value uh, so yeah thank you no it's <laughs> thank you nice one.